The port of Sultana Bay is South Africa's deepest port, accommodating ships with a draft of up to 21.5 metres. The Western Cape government has applied to the Department of Trade and Industry to designate the port in IDZ. A feasibility study on the potential industry clusters include an oil and gas supply hub servicing the oil and gas industry. BDFM talks to Alan Windy, MEC of Finance, Economic Development and Tourism in the Western Cape about the gas strategy. Okay, we, we, we've been working now for quite a while on our gas strategy. Um, we, I think we've got a very substantial gas strategy. Uh, we, we've completed it, taken it through Cabinet. Uh, we're now workshopping it through uh, ESCOM, through the National Department of Energy. Um, we really are starting to build on this gas strategy. If you look at the South Africa's uh, gas energy mix, it's been very small in our target space. So we're saying maybe we should actually lower some of the nuclear demand uh, or, or future demand um, and start lifting some of the gas. And we think it's really pertinent for this region because this region of South Africa we've got solar and we've got wind. But solar and wind they are not finite. They, the wind stops blowing sometimes and the sun stops shining sometimes. And gas makes good sense as the fill in. So it's quick it's, you know, it's a quick on and off, that's the first thing. The second thing is we already in this province have two gas turbines that operate, one in uh, Mossel Bay and one in Atlantis. These gas turbines, are they're called gas turbines, but they actually run on diesel. They need to have a conversion. And what we are saying is how do we then use that as a lever to get more gas into our market? And so this, our strategy that we're working on is how do we get uh, the gas that's, that's being found in more and more abundance around our coastline. You know that we've already got Ibobesi gas fields off the Orange River Basin, but there's more and more gas being found up in Angola Way and of course the big gas finds up off Mozambique, LNG. How do we get that into our system? So the first thing is to say, how do we get that conversion for those energy plants, which are peaking plants? They're very expensive on diesel, sort of eight, nine rand a kilowatt hour. Whereas at gas, we come down to 90 cents a kilowatt hour. It really makes a big difference to put gas into those systems. And then they can move from peaking to, to mid-range. But they, we see them as a lever to get gas into the system. Once you've got gas into the system, then you've got to invest in the infrastructure. And I don't see us as the government investing into that infrastructure. I can I see private sector coming on board and saying, how do we then become operators? And once we do that, then it'll change how we plan as, as government. So municipalities will then start instead of just putting when, when, a, when a new development takes place either industrial or residential they will say how do we then pipe in not only water electricity sewerage but you add gas to the to the mix and then gas starts playing a role in our economy in domestic space for heating and cooking but in the industrial space for for energy and once we do that we start changing the competitiveness of our region so gas is absolutely a very very critical part of the strategy going forward of the economy of the region. Avidi Energy will be the first private company to enter the South African gas market in the Western Cape. Avidia Energy is currently building a liquefied petroleum gas handling facility in Saldana Bay. Uh, Avidia Energy is a fully integrated LPG company. Um, it was established in 2007 and its sole purpose was to build uh, the first purposeful import terminal for LPG in South Africa. Um, the first opportunity of course is the more near-term opportunity which is to provide South Africa with a secure supply of LPG. Um, and once this facility is built the perennial problem of shortages in the winter will disappear. Um, so that's, that's short to medium term. I think longer term we expect a real growth in the usage of LPG in South Africa. I, I think historically there's been a disconnect between the price in South Africa and international price. I think prices of LPG in South Africa has been set through gasoline prices. Um, and there's all, you know, there's been, there's a, there is still a disconnect between, between what happens in gasoline and what happens in LPG. I think with terminals like ours being built, um, South Africans would be able to, to, to get the benefits of, of cheaper international gas prices um, when they are cheaper. Um, that's the real benefit.
there will be challenges. Um, you know, the, the TMPA has has picked a terminal operator to build the offloading facility and the pipeline. If this is built in a timely fashion, it's not a problem. We simply connect to the pipeline. If it's not built in a timely fashion, it's a concern. There are clearly regulatory hurdles you must jump through uh, in building a facility like this. We, we obviously have our concerns about the long process for obtaining some of these permits. Uh, the EI, EI, typical uh, EIA in South Africa takes between two and three years. Uh, we feel obviously that can be shortened. We are in the tail end of that, of that process. As far as our facility is concerned by next winter, not the end of next winter, but next winter. Next winter, I say June of next year. Um, if a pipeline is ready by that time, it's not a problem. If a pipeline is not, then I think we need to start looking. And I think the country, it's not just us, I think government and the public will demand uh, that something be done. You can't have a facility and it's a 300 million rand facility sitting. And South Africans have South Africans have no gas um, because somebody hasn't come to the party as far as the pipeline is concerned. So um, I think we'll revisit those issues um, next year. Um, again, you know, we've been assured that the pipeline will be in place.